Hi, welcome to Art in Nature, part of the 2022 MSU SciFest. I'm Elizabeth Zink, and I'm the Outreach Coordinator at Explore Hope at Hope College. During the school year, Explore Hope offers K-12 STEM activities like field trips, Saturday programs, and community partnerships. But over the summer, we transform Hope College into the place for hands-on science fun with almost a 1,000 students each season. We're celebrating 25 years of Explore Hope's summer science camps this year, and we're excited to bring the exploration to you. Art in Nature is one of our newest camps, and kids love stretching their brains and connecting art with nature. Did you know color, texture, and pattern are all part of nature? How can artists be inspired by nature? And how does nature affect the art we create? Let's dive in and find out together. Art and nature overlap in many ways. Think for a moment about how you've seen art through nature in your own life. Colorful fall leaves, rough bark on a tree, patterns on a bird's wing. Art is around in nature in so many ways. Artists can represent nature exactly the way it is or in different ways with different perspectives. So in this piece of art, the artist used leaves and flowers and wood to make a symmetrical design. And it reminds me of a bigger flower and the leaves become flower petals. Rocks on a seashore inspired this artist to create a sculpture. What do you think of when you see this artwork? What do you think the artist wanted to communicate to people? Oh, I love how the artist used flowers to make this drawing come to life. Those petals are so unexpected, but their texture makes that portrait extra beautiful and really interesting. Now, the leaves didn't fall in the spiral pattern, but maybe the artist was inspired by how they twirled in the wind. I also noticed the leaves are organized by size and by color. The artist made a lot of choices and it helps me focus on the difference in the, how the leaves grew in nature and how they move. So in both art and nature, we can see different patterns, colors, and textures. Take a second look at the following pictures and point out where you see different colors and textures and patterns. In this image, these rocks slowly cooled underground from hot magma, and they formed long hexagonal columns. As they weather away above the ground, they break into beautiful columnar jointing, striping this cliff with long vertical lines. Let's explore more ways that art can be represented in nature with patterns. Patterns are everywhere around us. Think about the clothes you're wearing, the walls of your room, the fabric on your couch. Patterns are an important part of art and they can be seen often in nature too. Think about your pet or your favorite animal and if they had a pattern. Now, can you guess what this close-up pattern is? That's right, this one is a cheetah. These are plants called succulents. They're common as houseplants or in gardens. Their concentric leaves almost look like little roses. And this pattern has lines and more concentric circles. But do you see the bird's head at the center of this image? This is a peacock with its tail feathers displayed. Nature also inspires color. Have you ever heard the phrase Roy G. Biv? It stands for all the different colors in the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. We see colors because they're different wavelengths of, wavelengths of light. How many colors can you spot in the following pictures. And look closely at this picture. This is a picture of a gorgeous rainbow over a city. But can you see the double rainbow? And if you look closely enough, can you see those seven colors? All right, let's look at colors and animals. What animal is this? Wow, I see red, blue, and green. If you guessed a chameleon, you're right. They can change the colors to adapt to their surroundings. This forest scene is dominated by green, but if you look closely, you can see blue and yellow, even some purple in the path. When you take a walk outside, it's easy to see most natural things aren't flat. Nature inspires texture. 
Rocks have bumps and edges. There's patterns on leaves. Even blades of grass have fibers you can feel. Look at all the different textures in this picture of the beach. Foamy waves, a bumpy pebbled shoreline, smooth ripples on the water. There are many different textures in nature. Let's look at some more natural textures. Can you guess what they are? Hmm, maybe this is a pattern of roads seen up from an airplane. Or could it be cracks in a green rock? Do you think so? Nope. This is a zoomed in picture of the veins on the back of a green leaf. What an incredible texture in such a small everyday item. Now, this must be cracks in the mud. Oh, or maybe it's bark on a tree. What do you think? Did you guess a couple of lazy crocodiles sleeping in the sun? You're right. Now it's time for you to get inspired by nature and make your own art. Instead of heading to a craft cupboard, run outside and find natural textures and colors to inspire you. Or look inside for natural things that are already in your kitchen cupboards. We're going to be making our own natural paintbrushes and paint. Let's get started. Let's, Let's make some natural paint. So I've collected a bunch of different ingredients from my house and some specialty ingredients, and I'll show you how I made all these paint colors you see. You can use whatever you have at your house or whatever you find out in the yard. There are so many different natural pigments you can explore with. The first one I'm using is paprika. Paprika is a, is a dry powdered skin of chili peppers and it's used as a delicious seasoning in a lot of dishes. I mixed it together with some water. Actually, no, I did mix it together with vinegar to try to keep that bright color. And that's my little sample right there. I liked that one. I think that's a nice, pretty orange. So I'm keeping this with my paprika. Our next one is spirulina. Spirulina is an algae from the ocean and it makes a beautiful, vibrant green color. You can order it online. It's an ingredient in some smoothies. It's very nutritious, um, but it does make that gorgeous dark green. You can also use plant leaves and rub out the chlorophyll if you want a green color. That's a really easy way, especially in the summer. I mix that just with water to get a nice green. I also have beetroot powder, which is used as a natural colorant in a lot of foods. It's just made from the powdered beetroot. Beets are a vegetable. They have kind of a sweet taste. First, I mixed it with some egg yolk and it was pretty thick. So I added some water and that thinned it out. That's what I'll be using for our beautiful dark red. Now this next one's kind of interesting. It's actually a flower. It's called bee, blue pea butterfly flower and it's used in a tea. So it has a lovely taste. I actually pulled this out of a tea bag I have. And as you can see, just by brewing it in water, it makes this amazing dark blue. But I also tried a few different ways to see if I could get that color to be as vibrant on the page. And I didn't really find a way. I tried it with egg yolk and vinegar and just plain, I found is a lovely light blue wash. So I used that already for part of the background of the painting I'm gonna be doing. And there's that. The next one, Right next to it, you can see these vibrant purples and blues. This is actually blueberry juice. And here in West Michigan, blueberries are around us everywhere. If you just use the plain blueberry juice, it makes this gorgeous purple. Mixing it with egg yolk makes kind of a darker royal purple. And this is my favorite. When you add vinegar, it makes this gorgeous dark blue that gets more and more blue as it dries. So I've got the blueberry juice here. I just took some frozen blueberries and zapped them in the microwave, squished out the juice. That's what I've got right here. I'm gonna, I want to use that dark blue, so I will add some vinegar to it. Just mix that up. And that's gonna be my paint. And the last one I'll show you how I'll uh, mix it together is the turmeric. Turmeric is another root that when it's dried and powdered, it has this bright, um, bright yellow color, earthy flavor. It's used in a lot of Indian cuisine, but more and more people are using it for all kinds of great seasoning and it's very nutritious as well. So to make this one, I'm gonna use my egg yolk. Egg yolk is full of fats and powder and it's a really traditional way that artists will try to fix their colors to the page. 
It can change the color of your pigment a little, but I think these two are gonna go together really well. So first, I'm gonna pour some of this egg yolk in. And I'll add some of this powder. And I'll mix it. Now, why don't I just wanna use plain egg yolk? Plain egg yolk by itself actually dries to a clear, very light yellow. So it's pretty and kind of golden, but it's not gonna be vibrant. Down here, that's egg yolk and turmeric. So that's really, really vibrant. You can see it's a thick paint. If you want, you can add more water, you can add more egg yolk. You're in charge of mixing your paints. It's kind of fun to get to choose how you want it to, how thick you want the paint to be. All right, that's my sample page. And then I also made my natural paintbrushes. I've got three natural paintbrushes. I've got one with cedar, and I practiced the type of design it would make. I kind of like that. It looked a little sandy to me. And I have pine. I use this one. It's kind of um, brisk. These long lines could be waves or wind. And then I also have boxwood, which was really filled in more kind of some swoopy ideas. So I have an idea of what kind of a painting I'm going to make inspired by these colors and shapes. And I think I'm going to try to make a Lake Michigan sunset. I already covered this page with the blueberry juice, uh, the blue pea butterfly flower to give it just a light wash. And now I'm going to be putting some of my colors over the top of it. I also have one other color, which is kale and clay. It's just a white clay, it's very thick, and it's a mineral that we get from rocks. So we've got plants, we've got rocks, we're using animal ingredients from the eggs, we're using all kinds of nature sources to make our paints today. So first, for my sunset scene, I think I'm gonna add the water right here in the middle. So let's see, for my water, I wanna use this swoopy pine needle I'm going to try some of that blue blueberry juice. And remember, it's going to get more blue as it dries. So it starts out very red, and as it dries, it gets more and more blue, which is fun to see as you wash on it. And it's okay if it splatters a bit. It's not a perfect painting. Oh, you can already see it's starting to dry a little bit more blue. All right. And then I'll dip that in my water to clean that off a little bit. Dry it off. And I'll just set that back down. Now I think I'm going to add some plants on this side and have the beach in the middle. So I'll use my cedar to add in some plants on the side. A little dip it in. So it looks kind of like we've got dune grass and we're walking down to the beach. I like to angle it a little. There we go. I'm going to dip that off. So I think it's ready for my next color when I want it. And then I'm going to use my boxwood to add some sandy elements in here. So sweep this in. Oh, there's that sand coming in. I'll really scoop it up so I can get a little more coverage. And the neat thing is that every time I'm dabbing it, it's kind of add, changing the texture of it. So it's, you know, when I'm trying it up and down like this, now it's really giving me that sandy texture I was looking for. One thing I love about natural paintbrushes is that I used what was out in my yard right now in March. But if, as you keep using natural paintbrushes over the year, you're really gonna change what materials you have available. So maybe your summer natural paintbrushes are going to inspire you to paint something different than your fall natural paintbrushes. That looks pretty sandy to me, I like that. Okay, I'm gonna dip that off. So it's ready for my next one. And now I'm really excited, I'm gonna do this guy. I see a couple of blotches, I'm gonna to try to dab those up quickly if I can, but I'm not too worried if it's not gonna be perfect. You can already see how much more blue that paint is getting, and it's just gonna get more and more blue as it dries. So I am going to use an actual paintbrush here for my sun, because I wanna make sure I get a good circle for my sun. But then I'm gonna add my clouds using my cedar. I'm gonna swoop up this 
thick white clay. I really wanted it thick to see it really coats it for the clouds so that that thick white color would show through because I'm also gonna be adding some extra touches of the paints. You know, I'm gonna to try to cover up those splotches. Yeah, with my thick white paint that I made. So here's my clouds. Now I said sunset, this is looking maybe more like early evening. So I'm just gonna add some touches of color. I'm going to use my pine one because it does some swoops. I'm gonna add Oh yeah, that's mixing in really nicely. I'll add this around the sun too, so that we can see the colors changing as it goes down. Look at the edges of colors. And, oh, that's my blueberry juice. This is, oh, I love the beetroot juice too. Beetroot juice always adds like a gorgeous, rich red color. There we go, now we're starting to see some of those sunset colors coming in. And I can kind of swirl it to make them look puffier. When you've got that thicker paint, it works really well. And I'm gonna add a little bit of this color down here so it looks like it's reflecting. I think I'll add a little zigzag down here. And maybe just a touch of it goes around. really get that color. Where'd my pine needle came off? And there's my picture. I'm pretty happy with it. I feel like it definitely reminds me of how colorful our Michigan sunsets are. You can make whatever you like. Get inspired by your materials. Get inspired by your paintbrushes. To make these paintbrushes, I just use a stick and my materials that I gathered and I rubber banded it on. And like I said with my paints, I just mixed vinegar, egg yolk, and water to, with whatever pigments I had. Happy creating. Let's make some natural paint. Have fun exploring your own paints and paintbrushes. Thank you to Susan Brown and Eliana Condotti. If you liked this activity, check out Explore Hope Summer Science Camps for more hands-on fun this summer. We're an American Camp Association accredited camp housed at Hope College, and we're celebrating 25 years of Explore Hope Summer Science Camps. Thanks for joining us.